the What Are We Ladies Doing podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the What Are We Doing podcast. My name is Levi McCurdy, and this is episode 146. 146 of these ridiculous things that I do every week, every single week. And listen, we just got to clear up some misconceptions from last week, okay? I opened the episode with a line of concern for a lot of people, okay? I've gotten a lot of comments on the channel, not from like my family, not from my family, not from my fiance, not from any close friends, not any business part. Nobody that I interact with on a daily basis was concerned at all, but the YouTube comments were extremely. And so I just need to clear up a few things. I started the episode last week by stating that I was on 150 milligrams of Vyvanse. And of course that was inaccurate. As we all know, I'm terrible at math. Okay. When I should have been doing, you know, algebra, I was busy at Macy's sizing up the Snuggie section. Okay. It's just what we did. And so uh, naturally, uh, the correction is it was 200 milligrams. Okay. A lot of people in the YouTube comments think that, um, I'm on drugs. They think I'm on cocaine. They think I'm on, uh, the H I was told in one of the comments this week that I film this show in between needles, which is, <laughs> which is hilarious to me because, uh, that shit like freaks me out. I black out every time my sister does. It's a hereditary thing that go, it's in the family. You know what I mean? And so like, there's no needle use here. There's no drug use in this house. We're all sober as a gopher. You know what I mean? No alcohol. We haven't drank alcohol. I think the last time, when's the last time we had alcohol? Like what? 18, 18 years ago, last time any person in this house had a sip of alcohol was 18 years ago. And I mean, drug use, I'm telling you, I've never, never, I have never, never done drugs in my life. I've never done them. I've never done drugs. I've never smoked. I've never vaped. Like I had a sip of wine. I had a sip of wine, like maybe died months ago. Someone forced me to try some wine and I was like, Ugh, gross alcohol. Like anything that is like mind altering or like whatever it may be. I'm telling you, I swear, I swear on my relationship with my father. I have never done drugs in my entire life. So the fact that the YouTube comments feel the need to spread this misinformation. Honestly, it's not true. Not cracked out. I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm not doing anything like, like illegal or, you know what I mean? Like we are, we are straightforward here. We are straight forward thinking people. And it, that's just, that's the way of the game. Okay. And that's what you can expect from this podcast is 100% honesty 100% of the time. Why would we lie? What reason would I have to lie to you people? I love you guys. You're my supporters. You're my fans. All 1,600 and how many? 1,630 friends. Is that how many we have now? Let's get a number. Let's get an exacto. We don't want to leave anyone out. Yeah. All 1,631 of you. I would never... I would never, I would never lie. I have your best interests at heart when I am honest with you, when I say I'm always telling the truth. And so uh, a few other updates this week. Um, obviously, everyone who's anyone knows that House of the Dragon season two, Game of Thrones saga, we're back, babes. And of course, you know, we weren't getting season two of the HBO show without a season two of recap and record. So if you're new here to this channel, which I believe the majority of you are, uh, since we have last talked about house of the dragon on our other podcast, 
recap and record. You can search that on YouTube, Spotify, every single platform on the damn planet. Uh, my co-host Carlos and I, uh, we're back. You know what I mean? We did the whole F boy Island. Love is blind. She looks nothing like Megan Fox thing. Like we did that. It was exhausting. We literally hated ourselves at the end of every episode. It was terrible. It was the worst experience. I think we're pretty much done with recapping uh, reality love shows. We'll talk about them independently. You know what I mean? We're still watching. Los and I, we still talk. We're still watching the F girl, F boy islands. We're still, you know what I mean? But like, eh, as far as a weekly thing, we're going to cut that. So we're back, babes. It's House of the Dragon time. Did season two's premiere have uh, almost two million less eyeballs on it as season one? Yes. Is season two's premiere way better than season one's premiere? Yes. Did the ending freak us all the fuck out? Yes. I mean, dude, it's blood and cheese. You know what I mean? And so allegedly according to the lore and the story and everything else going on, a little bit more insider baseball that we didn't even talk about on the episode. So here's a bonus clip for all the fans. Allegedly, the original written version of the Blood and Cheese story uh, within the House of the Dragon universe uh, was about 100 times worse than what we experienced last Sunday. And so... You know, uh, I had to pace. I had to walk around the studio for at least five minutes, just checking the pulse and calming myself down after the ending. You know what I mean? It's a little, when you have the kids, it's kind of, it hits different and woo, damn. I mean, but hey, Allison in this episode, get it sexy, get it sexy. You know what I mean? Like, hey, get, get what you need, princess. Get your rocks off. And uh, everyone else, of course, we talked about in the episode. So check it out. If you want further discussion, we have more uh, facts, insider stuff that they didn't even cover in the episode, uh, things about the episode that you might not even know, all coming at you from the Recap and Record podcast. Uh, so be on the lookout for that every week now. We're dropping on Mondays. House of the Dragon drops on Sundays at 9 p.m. on, uh, I believe, Max. Just Max now. We don't even have HBO in it. It's fine. It's still HBO. HBO Max, it's there. You can get the subscription for, like, what, $10 I'm paying with ads? You got to pay for ads now. Ugh, it's insanity. And so um, it's there. Go get it. Go watch it. And let's uh, let's follow along. And additionally to that... If you're in the Mechanicsburg, Central Pennsylvania area and you want a little bit more fantasy in your life, maybe just a few hours before this week's episode, I'm going to direct you to none other than our new friends at Fantasy Axe Throwing, okay? This is Central Pennsylvania's brand new premiere axe throwing arena. Okay. You walk in the door and you're not only greeted with, uh, one of the most professional, uh, axe throwing instructors on the planet. Uh, you've got the enchanted forest to your left check-ins on your right. And beyond that is a world of imagination. I'm talking the warlock's lair. I'm talking the Viking room. I'm talking the magic enchanted castle where the king sits. No matter, listen, whoever you recognize to sit in the throne, whether it's Queen Rhaenyra, whether it's whether it's you know Jaceris or the little the little punk shit kid who's sitting in the throne now, whether you like Joffrey, whether you like you know the Targaryen, whoever Baratheon, whoever you put in your throne, you need to do it at fantasy axe throwing, okay? Uh, the, the Vikings lair can hold up to 20 people. You have a party, you got a lot of friends, let's host a House of the Dragon night, go to fantasy axe throwing, then go watch House of the Dragon, and you're gonna have a killer time. Grab one, grab two, grab three, grab four of your friends, 
Go to fantasyaxthrowing.com right now uh, and book your room, and uh, you're not going to regret it. Uh, you go, you throw the axes, you have fun. Oh, and guess what? The Vikings drank. The, the king and queen, they're constantly pouring wine. It's BYOB, babes. You drink too. So grab some friends. Uh, grab the family. It's perfect for anyone 12 uh, or older. And you're going to have a killer time. And then guess what? You go home and boom, bam, now guess what? It's 9 o'clock and you're watching the latest episode of House of the Dragon. And then you come back. You listen to the recap and record podcast Monday afternoon on your way home from work at the dinner table while you're in bed with your significant other and just get nothing but a blast of knowledge from me and Los and uh, our, our prefla of sources on Twitter uh, and just everything that encompasses the recap and record podcast. So be sure to check out our friends at Fantasy Axe Throwing. Uh, you can go to fantasyaxthrowing.com. I'll have that link in the description below and on all episodes of Recap and Record from here on out. So uh, shout out to them. Shout out to Ryan and Kelsey. Uh, they're the owners. Just got interviewed, by the way, ABC 27. Um, insanity. Uh, let's pull up that article right now uh abc27.com here it is boom fantasy theme top oh top story by the way top story that's what we do we produce top stories okay fantasy themed axe throwing Arena debuts in Cumberland County. A locally owned fantasy themed axe throwing arena recently opened its doors in Camp Hill, Cumberland County, right across the street from the Capital City Mall. You know what I'm talking about? Dave and Buster's, right across the street. The brand new fantasy axe throwing is owned and operated by mid state natives Kelsey and Ryan Daly, who debuted the new fantasy themed axe throwing venue early this month. Uh, we opened on uh, Saturday, June 8th. Fantasy Axe Throwing is situated in a proximity uh, of 3,100 square feet, located at 3401 Hartsdale Drive in Suite 137 of the Capital City Plaza. According to Ryan, uh, he and his fiance worked for eight months straight to build out this new location, and we can confirm. We were there. We witnessed it. Uh, we really wanted to bring something new to the community and uh, see what we could do with something different to Central PA, Daily explained. So we just decided to take a plunge and go for it. Fantasy Axe Throwing is comp um, comprised of four different fantasy-themed axe throwing rooms, which consist of the Enchanted Forest, the Viking Tavern, uh, the Castle Throne Room, and the Warlock Lair. According to Mr. Daly, each of these themed rooms is capable of hosting anywhere from eight to 10 guests at a time, with the exception of the Viking Tavern, which can host up to 20 guests. Altogether, the new location can accommodate 48 people at a time. What a wonderful, wonderful thing. Whether it be a memorable experience of friends and family or group events and parties, Fantasy Axe Throwing has you covered. Currently, the rates are $28 per person for one hour of axe throwing fun. And if you're interested in booking a room, you can click here. Obviously, that takes you to fantasyaxthrowing.com. Open Wednesday through Sunday. Finally, being open is a great relief. Daily Expressed, we're putting everything on the line to open Fantasy Axe Throwing. So please, if you're in the Central PA area traveling through... Uh, somewhere uh, close by Lancaster, York, come up here because it's better and because Fantasy Axe Throwing is now open and makes the perfect date night. If you have someone you like or love uh, or children who are over the age of 12, trust me, uh, we will be attending. We'll be there many times. Uh, Los is definitely going to go. Megs is ready to go. Uh, our family and friends are ready to go. 
So uh, all of that to say, House of the Dragon's back, and we're watching it, and we're loving it, and according to rumors, uh, the um, the fourth episode, I believe, in this uh, in this season is going to be one of the most insane things we've ever seen. So I guess buckle up for that, right? Uh, what a wonderful time to be alive. Get ready to say bye, bye, bye to Justin Timberlake. He's on drugs and he got arrested. It's been the talk of the town. It's been the talk of the town. It's either it's, it's either one of your friends just got dumped or or Justin Timberlake or that hot to a girl. And you know what I mean? Listen, ladies, if you're not hot to you gotta, what are you doing? <laughs> if you're, <laughs> if you're not, <laughs> oh, you gotta give him that hot to a girl. Oh, you gotta give him that hot to a girl. Oh, you If you're not hot to and spitting on that thing, what? are you doing you know what i mean uh but if we're not talking about that we're talking about justin timberlake and so he was our boy was arrested man our boy was arrested in what uh apparently he says is a um was a mistake he didn't know what he was doing uh you know i don't know whatever the excuses are for first time what seemingly would be the first time abuser justin timberlake uh, so I can't wait to see how many puns I can fit inside of this boy band tragedy. Justin Timberlake was arraigned on one count of driving while intoxicated and released from police in New York, uh, according to his attorney. According to police, the singer was observed around 12.30 a.m. Tuesday morning operating his vehicle in an intoxicated condition in Sag Harbor, New York. Timberlake was driving a 2025 BMW when he allegedly failed to stop at a stop sign and failed to maintain in uh, his lane of travel a statement from Sag Harbor Police Reed. Uh, and so after the officer initiated the traffic stop, Timberlake told police officer he had one martini and I followed my friends home, according to records. So lie after lie after lie. Uh, homeboy was found. He had like Molly, cocaine, and like four other drugs in his system. Homeboy was partying on a Tuesday, on a, on a Monday, Tuesday, Monday into Tuesday, man. How bad was your weekend? Like what's happening, dude? Or maybe he was on a bender. Maybe we started Friday and then just ended up home on Tuesday. Who knows? It's been known to happen. Uh, or maybe not with Justin Timberlake. But it's just, you know, he's, so what's, Jesus Christ, Justin Timberlake, uh, they said his eyes were bloodshot and glassy. And I mean, the uh, strong odor of an alcoholic beverage uh, coming from his breath, all of the court documents stated. Justin was arraigned on one count of driving while intoxicated and released in custody, da 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 Da, da 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 Okay. Uh, so, damn. I mean, uh, so what now is happening is there's a, uh, there's a, uh, there's a clip going around, I guess back in the nineties in sync did this like anti-alcohol and anti-drugs campaign where they went around to people's houses and said, Hey, you know, let your children know that the Joey and Justin and Lance and 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 the other guy uh, say, hey, don't do drugs and don't drink alcohol. The group in sync? No. Uh, we're just going door to door to say thanks. Yeah, for talking to your kids about drinking. You see, even with all our success, you're still a bigger influence on your kids than we are. And then now that's going viral, of course. And so, um, you know what I mean, kids? Don't do drugs. And so, um, everyone, here's the thing. We've got the exclusive, babes, okay? We don't get... We don't just read the articles and, you know, that's it. We've got what everyone else has got. We've got the inside scoops. We've got the exclusives. We've got the breaking news. We've got the only copy that we have seen. Not a single news outlet, Twitter feed. No one is talking about 
the video. Okay, everyone's got the mugshot. Everyone's seen it. There he is, pretty boy Timberlake, of course. Look at him. He's adorable. Uh, and so, but what the rest of the world doesn't have is the video of the traffic stop. Okay, we've obtained it. We pay a lot of people a lot of money to get things like this. And for the first time, we're going to now show you uh, the live, uh, the, the, it was the police cruiser camera feed in the front of the car. This is what took place when the police officer in, uh, in that part of New York pulled over our beloved Justin Timberlake. Here you go. I mean, this is, um, it's, uh, it's actually quite, quite incredible. Tim. All right. So clearly, All right. well, it's you got fine. pretty good balance there. Thank you. Uh, I want you to step, bump, step, bump, bump, step, For Timberlake, bump, this isn't a challenge. Step, bump, bump, five, six, you know. seven, eight. Step, bump, step, bump, bump, step, bump, step, bump, bump. Pot of beret, kickball change, step, clap. Does he look intoxicated Five, six, to you? Seven, eight. Come on. What is this? You know what would be good is if you hit kicked and then you kind of did that right. and a barrel turn and then ha! Moves he's doing on the you world know? tour. That was, that was good. That would be. That was know. really good. You a dancer? No. No, no, no. Not a, I'm, I'm just drunk. Damn it, dude. Ah, he, he let it slip. He let it slip. Damn it. Okay, well, we gave him the benefit of the doubt for at least partial. I mean, did you, he? if he can hit the dance moves while getting pulled over, I mean, I mean, kudos to him. And apparently it came out that the arresting officer, the officer that pulled him over as he approached the window and and they knew what was happening. They smelled the alcohol. They knew they were going to take him in. Justin Timberlake says, oh, this is going to kill the tour. And the officer, who does not know who this man is, does not recognize Timberlake at all, goes, what tour? And Timberlake responds, the world, the world tour. I mean, God damn. Well, I mean, he is, he's still, I don't know. I don't think they've updated us. I don't think we have an update on whether or not uh, he's going to continue that tour. I mean, he's out of prison now. He's out. Uh, you know what I mean? They don't keep him for that. They just, he just has a court date now in a few months or something. So he may or may not have to, uh, you know, you know, come back uh, or cancel or move around a few dates on said world tour. Uh, but, um, Hey, you know, was anyone listening to the album anyways? I mean, I guess I, I haven't, I don't, I don't think I've heard a single, I didn't even know he had a new album. I didn't even know what he's name one song. Hey, go ahead. Without Googling name one song in Justin Timberlake's new album that he's world touring with, unless it's within the only world tour Justin Timberlake needs to be part of is an in sync world tour. But Joey is now like just best friends hooking up with AJ from the Backstreet Boys and they're just doing their own shows. They're like, fuck Justin, whoever wants to come dance with us, come dance. And you know, it just, that's what happens. And so they're just doing their own thing. Like they, they're like, we don't need Justin. And so then Justin went and made his own album and was like, fuck you guys. I'm going on a world tour but not before I go on a freaking bender. Like while I, I'm pretty sure his wife is out here wearing $20,000 jeans, uh, you know, it's one of those situations where we haven't heard from her. So we'll see how this all plays out. I'm going to assume the tour is going to continue. I'm going to assume this is going to bounce back. It's just, it's just in Timberlake. He's already like, like just being like, please, it's just like one, it was one time. This was a mistake. Obviously I'm a good guy. Like everyone's coming to his defense saying how great of a guy Justin Timberlake is like fucking Ellen DeGeneres is like, you know, like free Justin or whatever the fuck she says. And it's just one of these, he's just kind of like, 
I'm so sorry situations. And we're all just over here like cry me a river, bit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so we'll see where Justin Timberlake lands on the scale of public opinion, because that's all that matters. It doesn't matter where the judge finds him guilty. It doesn't matter what the sentencing becomes. It doesn't matter what anyone says about it. It doesn't matter, uh, what, uh, anyone but the public thinks. And if the public forgives him, then the public forgives him. And that's all that matters. And because guess what? It's a world tour. You know what I mean? So do we got, we got to give a shout out. We got to give a shout out to our people, our couple of the week, couple of the week. You guys know who you are. You deserve this award. You deserve this, uh, every week, honestly, but you know what I mean? This week we're giving you that recognition. We got to give it to somebody next week, obviously someone else, but this week, our couple of the week, I mean, what? What a, just what an example, what an example of what love and passion and just pure enjoyment and lust and, and feeling and, uh, mental connection. This couple couldn't be any more perfect for each other. And that's why we have chosen the ex Patriots head coach, Bill Belichick, and his girlfriend, uh, her name is Jordan Hudson. Yes, Bill Belichick and Jordan Hudson are couple of the week. I mean, these two have been together since, what, 2020, 2021? They've been together for at least three years now, okay? And I mean, if you want to talk about, I mean, talk about love at first sight, talk about uh, a perfect couple, talk about a match made in heaven. You want to have Netflix, a per perfect match. You want the perfect match to be the perfect match. It's Bill Belichick and Jordan Hudson. Okay. These two, I mean, they've been seen on private jets together. They've been out in public together frolicking. I mean, it is one of the most cutest things I've ever seen. Now, uh, for those of you who aren't aware, uh, Bill just celebrated his 72nd birthday right up there with every single presidential candidates. We'll get to him in a minute. You know, we couldn't resist. Okay. So Bill just celebrated his 72nd birthday and for to celebrate, uh, they went to Jordan's favorite restaurant, uh, Chuck E. Cheese, because she uh, loves the fact that uh, the cutoff at Chuck E. Cheese is 25. And because Jordan is only 24 years old, they still get her in for free. And so um, she gets to play the games. She gets to eat the little pizza. She gets to watch the digital show. They got rid of the animatronics. It's just a screen now. And so while Jordan's doing that, Bill gets to take some phone calls. He checks his sports stats. He makes sure the Patriots, he checks in on Tom Brady and he gets a lot of work done. And so that's pretty much, you know, it's, it's, um, it's not, it's not a contingent point. They love each other. Okay. She loves him for who he is. It has nothing to do with the fact uh, that, you know, Bill was the head coach of the Patriots for like ever. And he's won, uh, Super Bowl 36, 38, 39, 49, 51 and 53. And so he probably, probably most likely, um, has a shit ton of money. And so, uh, hats off, babe, hats off to you, Jordan Hudson, Jordan Hudson is the prime example. Jordan Hudson and the Hawk Tug girl spit on it. You know what I mean? Jordan and her are now the number two females in this country. Jordan Hudson should be exactly what every single white female on this planet should do. I'm not including 
I'm not including other races just because we they've got their shit figured out. They know what they're doing. Like, you know what I mean? They roll with people kind of their age, maybe a little older, maybe a little younger, but not, not a 50 year age gap. You know what I mean? They've got it figured out. Okay. If I were to ask Carlos, he thinks it's weird. I get it. So there's clearly a single, maybe two, but definitely one reason why Jordan is with Mr. Bill. And it's because she loves him. She loves him for who he is, not only on the outside, but while he is inside of her. And so, you know, they're great together. And so, uh, you know, page six reported back in 2023 that Belichick uh, and Holiday had been involved in a drowned back and forth, a breakup nearly after a year. Belichick parted ways with the Patriots in January 2024. Uh, Jordan Hudson. And, oh, of course, Jordan, of course she's, you know, they've, they've had a lot of time to get to know each other. She's a, she's a cheerleader. Jordan's a former cheerleader, uh, for them. And so it's just, um, it's something, it's something that I think a lot of people are really scared of. And honestly, I think this is going to start becoming the norm. I think you need to just really get on board with the fact that anybody that is, you know, tw from ages 24 to like, you know, maybe 49 to 50, maybe 60 years old will inevitably end up with a 70 year old dude. Okay. And they'll most likely be white. It's just, I mentioned, I don't, I said it again. I'm sorry. It's whatever. I'm, I keep bringing up race and I don't mean to, I don't mean to. I'm sorry. It's pride month. All inclusive. <laughs> oh man. It's so, um, it's just, they're adorable together. Look at them. Look at them. I don't even have much more to say on this other than I wish them well. I can't wait. Uh, hire me for the wedding. I'll do, we'll do photos. I got you a photo booth. I'll DJ it. Like, let's go. I'll do it. Hit me up. When's the wedding bill? I'll send you an invoice. You know what I mean? She's going to want, she's going to want the lights in the, uh, in the package. She's going to want the whole thing. I'll send you the invoice. We'll take care of it. Let me know when the wedding is and we'll take care of it for Bill and Jordan, because there are a couple of the week. I don't think anyone is doing it better than Jordan and Bill this week. And that's why they get it. So we're going to send them the trophy. We're going to send them the, uh, the trophy and get them taken care of and squared away. We'll get them on the website and uh, make sure that the local news knows about Bill and Jordan. So last night, uh, I think every single artist on the planet hit upload. Last night might go down in history as one of like the biggest release nights on the planet. Last night at midnight, tonight at mi whenever, midnight, uh, a shit ton of music just came out. I'm talking a boatload of singles. I'm talking a handful of albums and like, you probably don't know about half of them. So, uh, of course it's what we do here on the, what are we doing podcast? We have compiled every single release that came out last night at midnight. Uh, and boy, oh boy, some of these are already great. We're working our way through this list. But as you can imagine, it's going to take some time. So we'll start with uh, the singles, then we'll get into the albums. First up, we've got Charlie XCX and Lord with their song Girl, So Confusing Remix. Next, we've got Ariana Grande, Brandy, and Monica, The Boy Is Mine Remix. After that, Gracie Abrams and Taylor Swift, Us. Uh, next, New Jeans, Supernatural. Next is Peso Pluma and Cardi B, Put Them in the Fridge. Next is Ice Spice, Fat Butt. Camila Cabello, Chanel Number no. 5. Paris Hilton and Rena Swayama, I'm Free. Of course, of course, Paris Hilton gave us a banger. A banger. Let's just, let's pause right there. Let's pause right there. Up until that point, I mean, we might play some Ice Spice. We might play some uh, Ariana, but I mean, let's look. Let's get, let's open up some YouTube music 
and let's find Paris Hilton's new song because God, I love this comeback. I love this comeback from Paris Hilton that no one is talking about. Like, man, here it is. Let's listen. Hide in the dark, get the key to my private pages. Let's take this up tomorrow. Let's shake up all the blue. I do what I wanna do. Yo, yo, hey. Right here it is. You ready for the hottest take of the century? I know it's an easy thing to do, but Paris Hilton's new song, a thousand times better than whatever JoJo Siwa is doing. The Karma, the next one, the one that's out now, I don't even, I'm done paying attention to that wretched performer of a, I can't stand her. Take the wrap off the car, get a normal car. I can't do it anymore. I'm done with Siwa. But as far as my personal and professional opinion on music, all of those nasty thoughts that I have about JoJo aside, I hate her. All of that aside, the music, this Paris Hilton song in 2024, hands down, a banger compared to anything that like JoJo C was doing or like, I don't know, maybe dare I say a handful of songs I heard on the radio this week. But again, I would say that hot fucking take of the season is uh, maybe Paris Hilton's song should be getting more radio play. All right, continue the list. Coldplay dropped a song. New Jeans dropped a song. Perry Edwards, Post Malone, and Blake Shelton, Pour Me a Drink. Here's uh, here's the thing. Megs and I, we have concluded our opinions. Uh, F1 Trillion uh, by Post Malone coming out very, very soon. The album is dropping soon. From Post Malone, the country album. Here's the issue. We don't really necessarily vibe with the country collabs. Like the like the new song, Pour Me a Drink, it's great. We love it. It's a Post Malone banger. Like we love, Post Malone can do no wrong. But when it comes to like Blake Shelton, ah, you know, I don't know. I feel like there, there's so many so many other, and we don't know. We don't know what's left in the bag. The album has, I think, 16 tracks. We've only gotten these two singles from Blake Shelton and Morgan Wallen with Post Malone so far. So there's still more to come, but like, man, you could do so much more with someone like Jelly Roll or, or, or Kane Brown or, or, uh, get fuck Post Malone, get Florida Georgia line back together. Uh, let's talk at Dan and Shay. Like there's so many newer mainstream artists other than Blake Shelton. I get it. He's a legend. The record label probably pushed him on him, uh, you know, whatever, but fine. It's just meh. It, it Blake Shelton knocks the song a point for us, unfortunately. So we're going to see how the rest of the post Malone album rollout goes. But so far, so good. Um, who else we got? Uh, Glorilla dropped a song. Carol G dropped a song. Jaden Smith dropped the song Roses. Holy crap. Rich Kid and Kanye West. Give me a second remix. Uh, Marin Morris and Julia Michaels dropped a song called Cut. DJ Mustard and Travis Scott, Parking Lot. Uh, Asky and CeeLo Green, or I'm sorry, uh, Asa Asaki and Central C. Okay, I don't know that's Rod Wave dropped a song. Uh, IDK and Gunna dropped a song. Kygo and the Jonas Brothers Healing Shattered Heart is out now. Gracie Abrams album is out now. Uh, Ed Sheeran X 10th Anniversary Edition is out now. G Easy just dropped an album that no one cares about, and Kygo dropped an album. So you know what I mean. I even skipped a couple there. Uh, it's like the the music industry last night exploded. Uh, so I'm sure check out your lady, uh, your favorite artists, and uh, see because they're uh, they're they're probably they probably dropped something. Uh, they probably dropped. They probably dropped. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is it. This is the end or the beginning or however you want to define it. But people, we've been talking about it for the last year and a half. World War Three is upon us. 
I know. I get it. I understand. I understand your frustration. You could never have imagined that I would be the one breaking the news to you about World War III. But guess what? Here I am. And it's my duty as an American citizen. Lord knows I'm not fit for any branch of the military. I'd end up blowing something up I'm not supposed to. So let's not get me anywhere near those buttons. Okay? But for, uh, you know, as part of my duty as an American citizen, I'm giving you the news. It's up to date. It's honest. It's truthful. We're basically CNN. I don't know. Is that a good one? I don't know. Fox? I don't know. Whatever you want to refer to us as, that's what we are. Give us your money. World War III is here, baby. And if it wasn't the best announcement from the United States, the people who make the decisions, I mean, in not only this country, but pretty much around the world, the United States, what once was the greatest country on the planet, has now reinstated the draft. We are now drafting soldiers of the United States. Any man who is 18 to 25 years old will automatically be signed up for the United States military. The draft is back. It's here. I saw somewhere on Twitter that it might include women as well, but I'm not sure. And hey, guys, good luck. Good luck with that. Good luck with that generation of so these they're TikTokers. They're TikTokers on prescription drugs or maybe not even prescribed to them. They're on pills. They're on TikTok. Adderall. It's going to be an Adderall fueled war. The 90% of them, we all have anxiety, depression. Who are you sending to fight? Who? The kids doing the milk crate challenges? Those guys, the kids, the the mumble rappers from Florida, those guys, you're sending the island boys to defend this country? What are we talking about, guys? We're reinstating the draft for this generation? Send the ones you never did before. Send the boomers. They know how to use the guns. They've already got the guns. They're not going to give them up. They love it. They love it. Call 90% of the boomers. You know who has the guns. They're registered. Call 90% of the boomers on the registration list and get them signed up. Say, hey, we're going to give you 45 grand to use your guns against the enemies of this country. You want to go? We're not trying to take your guns. We're trying to give you more. They'll sign up. The TikTokers aren't ready. The TikTokers aren't going to war. For what, dude? For what? Download chat GPT and make AI do it. Are you insane? Like, what are we talking about? What type of army are we going to build with a bunch of 18 to 24 year olds to fight Russia, to fight Putin? Are you insane? So meanwhile, while we're dealing with all of the, the mental stress of our, you know, existing slash potential future children having to go to the war because of draft, uh, we're good here at our house. Uh, we got the certificate of the tism here over at our house. Uh, and Megs and I are not that of age anymore. Uh, you know, so we're good to go, uh, in the McCurdy household, but unfortunately others are not so lucky. We're working on some methods to kind of hopefully, uh, dodge or not, you know, Allegedly, that's a terrible term when it comes to the draft. We're not going to say the word dodge. But, you know, we're going to figure out how some of our friends can hopefully maybe not have to go to war. Uh, Insanity. But, you know, hey, while we're at it, while we're getting enough uh, American soldiers signed up for the Army, the Navy, everything else, because we're going to need them, uh, why not, while we're at it, President Biden... Why don't we sign a 10-year contract with T-Mobile, a.k.a. the Ukraine, and get that whole bus busting? Because if there's one thing that President Zelensky in the Ukraine is terrified of is us pulling financial support. If we do that, Putin takes the country. Putin's probably going to take the country no matter what. Uh, You know what I mean? We might have a ceasefire suit. Who knows? But if 
the United States stops uh, funding the Ukraine, they stop existing. And so uh, Biden and his infinite wisdom signed up all of our tax dollars to go straight over there for the next 10 years. We'll see if maybe a new president comes into power, we might get rid of that agreement. I don't know if he can. I don't know if he will. We'll see. I don't know. It's all up in the air right now. All of this is all of this is still just kind of happening and we all just kind of have to accept it. Half of us don't even know. The, I literally have friends that if you mention the word uh, Donald Trump or Biden, they'll freak out and shut down because they can't handle the pressure of attempting to understand how our government actually works. You know what I mean? There's layers to it. Some people think there's a deep state and that like president Obama is the president or something. And, but then there's other people who kind of actually pay attention to what's going on. And so we've got the Ukraine deal for another 10 years, which of course just comes off the backs of, uh, you know, uh, 75, uh, billion dollars of Russian assets are coming now from NATO. And so what better way to celebrate not only last week, father's day, but just, you know, the kickoff to the summer, it's hot here on the East coast. It's when it's 90 degrees in Pennsylvania, you know, it's hot. And so what better way to celebrate, uh, than to send some Russian nuclear subs right off the coast of Cuba and Florida. Like you go to Miami, you see a Russian nuclear sub just chilling, sitting there, maybe running a drill, maybe like, you know, cleaning their rockets on the side, polishing them up a Russian nuclear sub sitting off the coast of our country. And so then on top of that lasagna layer of bullshit that our country administration's gotten us into, well, of course we've got to retaliate. And if you're not sending, if you're not, if, 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 if Russia sends their nuclear subs, okay, then, um, we're going to bring in our nuclear subs, except we're going to do it a little bit, uh, a little bit better and a little bit, uh, harder. Okay. And for those of you who aren't aware, we've got, uh, the secret service submarine division showing up. Okay. This is real. This is legit. This is what we need to know about. U S nuclear attack submarine surfaces in Cuba, right behind the Russian fleet. So basically, uh, we're almost there folks. We're almost there. U S Navy fast attack submarine arrived in Cuba's Guantanamo Bay on Thursday, hard on the heels of, uh, Russians, uh, Russia's arrival in Havana 24 hours later, the USS Helena one of around two dozen Los Angeles class nuclear powered, uh, conventionally armed boats was making a root port visit while constructing its global, uh, Marine time security of the national defense mission. The U S Southern command said in a statement on social media, uh, uh, so, you know, it's, 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 um, um, scary when the secret service submarine silent service, I think they're called silent service submarine show up, uh, when they're, you know, uh, allegedly doing a routine. Oh, it just so happens they showed up when Russia did like we did our schedules. Like, did we not sync our Google calendars with Russia? Come on folks. Uh, little scary. So, uh, you know, but Hey, as long as, you continue to believe in our Lord and savior, Donald Trump. Uh, just know that as soon as if, which is inevitably, uh, in a few months, he'll be back as president of the United States. A lot of people are predicting every time we see the poll numbers, the percentage of Donald Trump winning the election goes up and Biden's chances go down. Even though the white house will attempt to have us believe Listen, this chick in the White House, this lady talking about the White House and representing the White House and giving us all the inside information and like 
arguing with the, 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 the news anchors that are there asking the real questions. She's telling us now that the videos of President Biden zoning out, wandering off, turning around, not knowing where he is, staring off into space, jammering, yammering, just not coherent whatsoever. All those videos are AI deep fakes that the mainstream media, the mainstream media and, and, and Trump supporters are putting together online to go viral. That's what we're to believe. She said it, I think she said it right here. It tells you everything that we need to know about how, um, how desperate, how desperate Republicans are here. Uh, and uh, instead of talking about the president's performance in office, and what I mean by that is his legislative wins, what he's been able to do for the American people across the country, we're seeing these deep fakes, uh, these manipulated videos. Uh, and it is, again, done in bad faith. Wow. Okay, great. That's awesome. Okay, good. That's why, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Um, but it, you know, so this is obviously, so this, this is a deep fake. This isn't real. And this is just something that, uh, the, uh, that the Republicans put together, right? Thanks to all the members of Congress and Homeland Security Secretary. I'm not sure you're going to do so. Of course, that is 100%. That video of Biden was 100% fake. We made it and it's it's AI generated. Yep. That's what we that's what the American people need to believe. Not that <laughs> the current administration is essentially funding World War 3, but everything else that's going on on the planet is okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay and we're going to get through it. We're going to get through it, guys. We're going to get through it and you know hopefully with with someone who can help us and uh maybe you know just keep our best interests in mind whether that be oh whether that be uh whether that be biden or trump or whoever whoever it is that will save us from the russian and honestly when it comes to saving the american people there's honestly one person doing it right. And it's not Biden. It's not Trump. It's not any real political figure. It's, a, it's someone call a vigilante. Someone call a hero of the night. Someone call a hero of the day, even sometimes. Someone call just a plain superhero. Flavor Flav is not joking when it comes to the closing of Red Lobster. Flavor Flav has now gone to his local Red Lobster, multiple locations, of course, multiple times, and has ordered one of everything on the menu just to fund that Red Lobster for another one to three months of operation time. Just to prove to corporate that that one there is worth keeping. Flavor Flav is single-handedly saving the American people. If there's one thing you should be worried about, it's the inevitable World War III. But second on most of America's list is the closing of the nearest Red Lobster within a 20-mile radius of their house, okay? And so with the help of Flavor Flav, we've got it taken care of. He's not joking, okay? And I quote, your boy meant what I said when I was going to do anything and everything to help Red Lobster and save the Cheddar Bay Biscuits. Ordered the whole menu. That was the worst Flavor Flav impression of all time, but it, I think it kind of sounded okay. So you know what I mean? That's what he says, end quote. He's ordering everything on the menu, just to save the Cheddar Bay Biscuits. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are we doing to help save Red Lobster? Because I know exactly 19 human beings who would be utterly devastated, maybe on the brink, maybe on the edge of the building, maybe on the edge 
of suicide if their local Red Lobster would close. I'm just saying it would be devastating to a lot of people in my life if Red Lobster were to shut their doors permanently, especially in central Pennsylvania. So with the help of Flavor Flav, let's all make a commitment right now. At least once a month, go to Red Lobster. Forget any other restaurant chain. Forget any other outings. If you can only afford one outing as a family a month to a restaurant, make it Red Lobster right now. Let's commit. I want you to put a comment down below and commit yourself to a once a month Red Lobster attendance. Now, you don't have to go as hard as Flavor Flav, okay? You don't have to order everything on the menu. I get it. Times are tough. Inflation. Biden's economy. But Flavor Flav's got a few bucks from back in his day, okay? So in the grand scheme of things, just maybe go once a month. And together, I think, we're going to listen. We'll get other podcasts that we'll get 280 plus to spread the message. We'll get, we'll get JMC for however many episodes he has left. We'll get Jeff. Everyone's going to spread the message. Go to red lobster once a month and together we're going to save the brand. We're going to save the brand. Okay. Because you know what I mean? It's, this is what happens. This is what this country's all about. You go bankrupt, but you actually don't go bankrupt because uh, in contrary to everyone's belief, when you go bankrupt, you're supposed to actually shut down. So it's fine. But we're going to save Red Lobster with the help of Flavor Flav. And I don't think anyone else is prepared to, uh, to, to take on this challenge. And if you are, then prove it. Prove it. Put your commitment in the comments below and make it happen. Send us a photo. Send us a screenshot. Send us your receipt. If you send me your Red Lobster receipt, from when you go this month, if you send me your receipt, I'll think about refunding it to you. I'll think about Venmoing you the total amount on your receipt if you send it to me when you go in attempts to save Red Lobster. Make it happen. Let's bring the brand back. Let's bring it back, bring it back, bring it back, baby. Here's the thing, and this is just a PSA. If if you're an employee, I think one of my neighbors might be. If you are, if you work at the local giant food stores, I need you to listen up, okay? Here's how my local giant food store is set up. We've got six regular teeny tiny self checkout checkouts, and then they opened up two full lanes that were completely self checkout, and then the other five were regular lanes with employees on them checking out customers. Those two full lanes of self-checkouts aren't the same as the mini self-checkout stations, okay? Let me explain. Those stupid mini self-checkout stations that we're all used to, they're trash. The scale's too sensitive. The machine yells at you. It's pronouncing everything. Please move your tampons to the bag. Please move your alcohol to the bag. Please move your private products to the bag. And it's like, great. Like, I don't care. I'm not embarrassed. I could give two shits when anyone thinks about me. The YouTube comments on this channel prove that. But like, you know, it still would be nice to kind of maybe like just not hear everything I purchased projected out loud. And the scales are sensitive. The old ladies checking you are like, why are you trying to steal shit? So then that becomes a whole debacle. When they opened up these two regular lanes that are self-checkout. Some giants have more, some don't, but ours have to. It was a godsend. No one was using them. Megs and I went to them every time and there were no problems. I checked out. I paid for everything like I should. It was the perfect system. It didn't yell at me. It didn't care about the weights. I could scan shit as fast as I can because it was half in self-checkout mode and half in employee mode. And so <clears throat> it trusts your employees a little bit more. So it let you scan as quickly. My life was complete. But as of late, they have now taken them away. They have shut down the two full checkout lanes. And at any given time, the mini pods, there's two to three that are out of service. So there's only three of those. And at any other time, there's only one to two employees on register anyways. So there's a line both ways at our now grocery store 
that is horrendous. It's causing me stress. It's causing me anxiety. Hey, Giant Foods, fix it. Hey, open up those lanes. Why'd you close them? It's devastating. You're causing stress in my life. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode 146 of the What Are We Doing podcast. Thank you so much for listening to me this week. I can't wait for episode 147. Until next time, it's going to be another doozy next Friday, babes. Oh, guess what? Next week is the Friday after the debate. Expect a full breakdown. You better believe I'm watching every moment of Donald Trump and Joe Biden on that stage next Thursday. I don't know where you watch it. I don't know where you get it. It's probably going to be on YouTube. I think CNN's doing it. Go to CNN.com. You can probably watch it there. I can't wait to see what drugs Biden's on. I can't wait to see what gibberish happens. I can't wait to see what Trump claims is the truth when it's really maybe not. I can't wait to see who wins. It's going to be a shit show. I can only imagine. I can only imagine they're going to cut his mic. How many times there has to be an over under of how many times they're going to cut Donald Trump's mic? Because I think that's one of the rules. And if they do, oh, he's going to get, I I mean, come on, dude, let's go. I can't wait. It's going to be comedy. It's going to be pure gold. It's going to be pure entertainment until next time. We're out of here, everybody.